Today on the program, we discuss issues of adoption and zoning surrounding the universal suffrage of the Nigeria Bar Association, NBA. Our guest is a former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, senior advocate of Nigeria, Augustin Alege. Some lawyers have also been assessing the two-year tenure of the NBA president, Abubakar Mahmoud, and speaking about their expectations for the incoming administration. Plus... The reactions of senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana, to the proposed press council bill, which seeks to regulate the activities of the media in the country. Well, that's the lineup on this episode of Law Weekly. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Melissa Antwonwoka, and for the next couple of months, I'll be standing in for your regular host, Shola Suryele. On the last two episodes of the program, we brought you some of the views and manifestos of the presidential candidates seeking to lead the Nigerian Bar Association, the NBA. The association has a membership of over 105,000 lawyers active in 125 branches across the 36 states of the federation. With such a huge professional membership, it's understandable the kind of attention the elections of the national officers of the bar attract. Well, after over two decades, Nigerian lawyers, irrespective of the age at the bar, branch, sex or status, had a rare privilege in 2016 to participate in the elections to choose the national officers for the association. Well, that opportunity came through a promise made by Mr. Augustin Alege SAN in 2014 during his campaign for office of president. But despite this adoption of universal suffrage, some lawyers still think that issues of adoption of candidates and zoning of positions need to give way to allow all lawyers vote and be voted for. So is it time to lose the process of zoning and adoption? This was the first question my colleague Chela Shuele put to Mr. Alege in this interview. Adoption and zoning are topical issues. Firstly, when um, we got on board, we decided to amend the constitution. And the things that the NB had been doing, which are in the constitution, we felt either we put them in the constitution I will stop doing them. And then um, the memorandum so submitted um, endorsed putting zoning in the constitution. And we also had universal suffrage. Universal suffrage was taken out of brought in delegate election. And if you have universal suffrage and um, you don't have zoning, you run the risk of one group controlling the entire association. So that's why zoning is good. However, um, those who still talk of adoption do not have the sense of what has happened with universal suffrage. Universal suffrage is a right for every person to cast their vote. So if it is zoned to the north, like it was when I did, was handing over, they not presented two candidates. So the entire bar could choose one of the two candidates. You know, and if you look at the constitution on the zoning, it says further that in each zone, there should also be a zoning policy whereby each group in the zone is respected. So let's just say you go to the west and you say it was zoned to my area, the Midwest, for example. How many branches do we have? And in the Midwest, you have Edo, you have Delta. So let us say, okay, we agree now in the Midwest, whenever it is zoned to us, Edo will take and Delta will take. So Edo may have um, Benin, Awichi, Gara, Ekoma, Urumi, five branches. So if we then do an adoption, in essence, five branches are choosing a president. The concept of universal suffrage and zoning anticipates that if it is zoned to an area, everybody from that area, after you've answered the zoning within that area, should be allowed to contest. Should be given an opportunity. Yes, so that the bar can choose from the candidates that are presented. When you now have zoning, adoption may have worked when you're trying to protect Delegate system, you don't have delegates where to go. The funny thing about the, the issue of adoption now is, even when you do an adoption, 
there are many people from that area who are not members of that forum, who practice in other parts of the country. Are you going to compel them? They are not even members. Let's take um, um, the various groups. Eastern Bar Forum is organized. Um, I know um, um, Arewa are still in the process. I think if they've adopted a new constitution. Midwest, new constitution. So it, it is totally um, wrong at this time, totally wrong to talk about adoption. But the most important thing at all times we must look at is what does the ban need at a particular time? We need a president now that is fearless, that can speak truthfully to the facts, that has knowledge, that has reach. We don't need a caring president. We don't need a timid president. That's what the ban is at this stage. And what we should look at, those who are contesting, which of them can fit the bill at this time, who is fit and proper at this time to lead the bar. Let's move away from issues of the bar to issues of the practice of the profession. We still have delays in criminal trial, especially of high profile corruption cases. Despite the provisions of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, which you know seeks to eliminate these delays, where do you think that we're getting it wrong? Well, I don't know criminal justice, and I don't know justice generally. We must understand that several factors coexist for us to have an effective and efficient justice delivery system. When you amend the laws, when you put all those things in place, there should be no adjournments more than four times, trials must go day to day, and all that and all that. Very good. You need to support it with some infrastructure with some logistics and with personnel. When you have a judge who has, um, I, I was speaking recently with um, Humble Justice um, Adejuma, the president of the okay. National Industrial Court, and he told me they just opened four courtrooms. I said, oh, it means um, he can post more judges. He said, we already have four judges. I said, and they have, two, have over a thousand cases already that each judge has 250 cases in his docket. So you come back to the trials. How many cases do these judges already have in their dockets? A judge has 600 cases. And you want him to take one, because as you call it, a high profile, and deal with it. So we need to have more courtrooms. We need to have more judges. There's a, an ongoing trial now, I don't recall the name, but each time they go to court, you hear the accused was not brought to court. You may have one black Maria in Kujie prisons or two, and that black Maria is to serve all the courts from probably Guagualada, um, Yanya, everywhere. So these are issues. You go to court, and there's power failure. The court will not have a generating set. How does the judge run a day-to-day -day trial? So you must understand that from the police, the prison service, and then the courts, we need to make things. If you go to the Federal High Court in Lagos, the current one in use is like a residential property, and the courtrooms are like bedrooms for children. But are we having these trials? And it is very difficult for us to apply fully the provision of the Criminal Justice Act in all these circumstances. Let's uh, round up with um, an issue that I'm very passionate about, issues of young lawyers. The other day we were treated to stories online of a young lawyer who was allegedly assaulted for trying to demand his wages. Now, there's no doubt that um, young lawyers face a lot of issues. You recently launched a foundation, a Lege Foundation, which I hear is geared towards empowering the young lawyers. How exactly do you intend to achieve this? At heart, I'm still a young lawyer. <laughs> and um, I still have 
memories of our days out of law school, youth pro years. And I still see that the problems that we faced 30, 33 years ago are even growing, becoming more burdensome for young lawyers. And when you've been in a profession that has been good to you, you need to try and give it a little bit back, which is why we came up with the Legal Law Foundation. And uh, scope is to support young lawyers with training and retooling. When we are sufficiently done with that, we intend to go further to support those who want to study law. We want to engage both the Nigerian universities, commission, council of legal education, Nigerian law school, even curriculum change. Because when you have the fortune of dealing with some young lawyers from other jurisdictions, the way they express themselves, the depth of knowledge that they have, you start wondering if we do not need to have a rejig of our curriculum here. A lot of what we still do here, for example, at the law school level, is to memorize and return back. But in other areas, we find out that people are now engaged in problem solving, scenario play. Whatever the law is, you, it's how you apply it. No answer is right or wrong. It's your ability to apply it. Mm -hmm.